Hey, what's up everybody? Lorenzo with Alternative City Comics. I'm here with another Indie Comics review. Um, I'm going to do things a little different this time. Uh, I'm going to do three different uh, books review rather than just one at a time, which I guess kind of makes sense uh, <laughs> rather than doing them separately. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the first book I'm going to do is um, A Picture of Everything Else, which is written by Dan Waters and illustrated by uh, Kishore Mohan, I think the name of the person is. Hope I didn't mess it up too badly. Uh, so this is published by Vault Comics, another great comic from, from Vault. And this takes place in, in Paris in 1897. Uh, and its focus is on uh, two struggling artists, uh, one named uh, Marcel and one Alphonse. Uh, Marcel is, um, is kind of a, is not too bad of a guy, but uh, Alphonse is kind of a dick. Uh, and, and it starts when there's like a party. Uh, this, this, this high society woman is throwing this party. And she's talking to these two um, affluent uh, twin brothers. And of course, uh, uh, Marcel comes in and they see him and they say, oh, well, your, your buddy uh, Alphonse can't be far behind. Because they, they dread Alphonse because he's, uh, he's a bit of a scoundrel. Uh, so they, they crash the party. Uh, they're such polite society that they don't have them thrown out right away. You know, and uh, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, maybe she had a, a bit of mercy on those guys, but usually, you know, party crashes, you know, they get bounced like right away, but uh, for some reason they don't. So they start up a conversation, or Marcel and Alphonse start up a conversation with the two twin brothers, and they're talking about the arts, uh, how photography is going to influence um, a portraiture and such things of, of the idle rich <laughs> conversation that it might have. Uh, and then they talk about also the, uh, the recent murders by what they, they call the Paris Ripper. And the brutal uh, types of slayings have been taking place uh, attributed to this, this Paris Ripper. Um, and while that's going on, Alphonse is meanwhile like ripping a woman off. She's, he's like stealing her artifacts and stuff. Uh, Marcel sees this, drags him out. Uh, they end up having to make a, mis a, a miraculous escape out the uh, the window, grab a bottle of woman's champagne, and just uh, just laugh about it on the way home as they walk down the street and drink and just uh, and and uh, just commit ar not armed robbery but just like you know a robbery right in, in broad uh, broad daylight. So after this, uh, Alphonse is just he's like I said he's kind of a dick. And he's, he's teasing Marcel about his homosexuality. And Marcel gets pissed off and he goes home to paint. They both share a, a flat. They're, they're roommates, unfortunately, for, for Marcel. So he goes home to paint. Uh, in the meantime, um, Alphonse is still out carousing and drinking and thinking of shit to do. And while, uh, uh, while Marcel is home painting, he gets a knock on the door and it's one of the twin brothers, which I think is taking a liking to him. Uh, and this, and they, 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 they talked about this, uh, the twins that pose for this guy they call the Englishman. Uh, the Englishman is this, this mysterious fellow that's like, he paints beautifully, but he never sells any of his work. So it's like, he just surrounds himself with his paintings and uh, he's content to do that. He lives in the hotel, but he just he appears to be a man of means. Oh, it's very mysterious about this Englishman because he pays well and he paints lots of people. And, uh, and, and the conversation that, that came up when uh, Marcel and Alphonse were at the party, but they were continuing this conversation uh, once um, uh, the twin arrived at, at Marcel's house, just, you know, just wanted to see his work, so, so to speak. And um, meanwhile, Alphonse is casing the Englishman's house, because he heard about the Englishman too, so this guy might have some money. So as he's peeking through the window, he sees this guy just, uh, the, the Englishman, the Englishman comes out and he sees the Englishman just like rip a painting in half and the painting starts to bleed. So he's like, well, he's horrified about this, right? So, and, so he leaves and he runs into Marcel who tells him that something has happened to the twin at his house. Um, now I'm not going to reveal a lot of stuff about what's happening there from here henceforth, 
But uh, the picture of everything else is, uh, for those of you familiar with the, the, the picture of Dorian Gray, it's about this, uh, this man who had a, a, a painting, a portrait done, and the portrait would age and he would not. So I guess this is a kind of a, a reworking of that story. Maybe it's the same painter, or maybe it's a, it hasn't been revealed uh, but the, the Englishman is, is the painter that, uh, that, uh, that, that painted Dorian Gray. Maybe we'll find out in the upcoming issues. But um, he used to say there will be a meeting between the boys, Alphonse and Marcel, and the Englishman. And there's going to be a lot of stuff revealed as far as that goes. And it really got me interested in the next issue. I am down with this book. Uh, it's, I read it a couple times. It was so good. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think this could be a, a good property. I mean, just, not just entertaining, which is right off the bat, I found it well-written, well-researched and so forth. But also I think this would be very right for some sort of a television or, or I'm thinking more television property. I see more of the serial, but it could be a movie, but you know, always speculating. So. Uh, I think a picture of everything else is definitely worth a pickup if you're a fan of, um, I wouldn't say, it's, it's kind of, it's not horror, but uh, definitely uh, intrigue and uh, just mystery and, and supernatural. So definitely pick that up. The second book is Serial by Terry Moore. Uh, you may know Terry Moore from uh, Strangers in Paradise. Uh, this is his big series. Uh, he's also done some others. And apparently this character, uh, her name is Zoe. Uh, she was this, one of the stars of, maybe the star of Rachel Rising, which is one of his, um, is, is also, also one of his, uh, his well-known works. And she is a, a woman who is, is 50 years old in the body of a, of a, of a teenager, of a, not even a teenager, of a preteen, like a, a 12, uh, 13 year old girl. And I guess she was possessed at some point. And I'm not a lot of t is told about this 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 story as it as it as it, uh, as it develops. I think what Terry Moore does is he he has a lot of he has a lot of like lo loyal followers and loyal readers who already are familiar with Zoe and know a lot of the story. So he gives a nod to them it's like, well, you guys know what's happening. You know, Zoe is doing this and Zoe is doing that, and this is you know the reason she's doing that. So I'll tell you as much as I can without giving away much of the plot. But as much of the plot is, uh, is is dependent upon seeing what Zoe does in the in the story. There's not a lot of dialogue in the first half of the book. The first few pages has dialogue, but after that it, it gets to like what she's doing. So it begins with her um, Zoe posing under a different name. Uh, and she's um, she's in the car with this this creepy guy who's a manager of a of a pizza parlor, and she's telling this guy that look you know, you know, I gotta go home. Uh, I'm I'm 16 years old. My parents are expecting me home. I got homework to do. And, you know, he's just being like you know the the, the lecherous pedophile uh, stereotype that you know that that everyone has, you know has seen, and he's coming on to her and he's. He's inappropriately touching her, and she jumps out of the car. Uh, what happens after she jumps out of the car? I just don't want to. I don't want to reveal too much about that because that's a pretty intense and cool sequence. But it's a very cool sequence. I just have to. I just don't want to give it away because it's um, it's, it's kind of an important part of the story. Later on in the story, we pick up which looks like, kind of looks like Zoe. Or maybe it's not Zoe, or it's some uh, maybe that maybe the the girl um, in this part is Zoe, and uh, the other girl who was in the car with the creep was not Zoe. I don't know. I gotta figure this stuff out. But this girl is in a sleeping in a, like a in a van, and she's she's dreaming. She's dreaming about just like uh, all this crazy stuff where she's like just going on a killing spree. She just like taking her like her toy, her, her plush toy, and using it as a as a sword and just chopping people in half and stuff. So she's like having a you know a nice little dream, like giggling to herself in her sleep. 
And then she gets a phone call from this woman who um, says something has happened to her husband. And and, I, and the, the girl just like, okay, well, just be cool. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Now, this may not sound like much, but a lot of stuff that I'm leaving out, you guys are gonna wanna see. So, <laughs> if you're a fan of Terry Moore, you, you probably know what I'm talking about already. If you're not a fan of Terry Moore, I think this is worth um, a look-see because I, I wanna know what's happening. I mean, it kinda reminds me a little bit of Stray Bullets. Uh, it's kinda that same mode. Uh, but a little bit less violent, maybe, but more cerebral than, than Stray Bullet, but, but it's black and white, and it kind of gives that, that same vibe. So even though I don't really know even the names of the characters, because there's no like uh, backstory given, or there's no thought balloons or, or narrative given in the story, uh, he leaves a lot to the imagination, or he just, like I said, takes for granted, that you're familiar with the characters and you know what's going on. But uh, Serial is one of the hot books from, from last week. I would definitely recommend finding that. You can find it and uh, picking it up. Because um, if you buried Rachel Rising, you, you know, already know what I mean. But uh, if you didn't, check out Serial anyway. Now the next book, the final book, is Wolverine, Black, White, and Red. Now Wolverine, Black, White, and Red is not an indie book by any means. But I just had to give it some love because I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I just got it because, okay, well, it's Wolverine. I like Wolverine, you know, most of the time. Uh, he's one of my favorite X-Men. I'm not a big X-Men fan, but I, I, do like, I do like Logan a lot. And this is, this is like their answer to Batman Black and White. With Batman Black and White, I think, if I recall correctly, I know the series I read, the original Batman Black and White was more the other artists and writers interpretation of Batman than it is uh, tales, untold tales from, from Batman's legacy. As long as Batman's been around, they could definitely use some untold tales. I'm sure there's, there could be um, um, literally thousands out there. Uh, but this is untold tales from Wolverine's history. Uh, and they get some of the best writers and the best artists uh, just a, a, an all-star cast of, of writers and artists to do uh, three Wolverine stories per issue. Now, I've, I've read the first two issues already. Uh, one is, uh, I, I'm, the picture's here from uh, with the first issue where he's like back in his Weapon X days and that's pretty intense. Uh, there's uh, a, they're, they're all so well written and drawn too in, in different styles. Uh, there's a uh, Wolverine uh, with there's a saber tooth appearance of it maybe in the second issue, but there's so many there's so many good stories that are just uh, to me it's good because it's just like bite sized nuggets of Wolverine and that's the way I like Wolverine and you know, I don't you know uh, the, the way Hickman writes it you know some people like that but it's not really for me not my favorite uh, in fact I've even dropped uh, Wolverine uh, the regular um, series but. I'm picking this limited series up. I think it's four issue, five issue series. I'm all about that because this is just Wolverine eviscerating motherfuckers. Just like, you know, it's Wolverine just being Wolverine, but not just, you know, in the Wolverine smash kind of a way. But there's also good stories along with it. So you get involved in the story and you get to see him just like be the killing machine that that he's known to be. So. If you're not picking up Wolverine, Black, White, and Red, you might want to, um, because these stories might be in canon. I'm not sure. I mean, they could be. I mean, this he's he's been around uh, uh, in real time as long as anybody. He's over 100 years old, so there could be something happening in this in these stories that could affect the mainstream uh, or the, the regular storyline. Who knows? But anyway, it's just worth a, a pickup just because it's good and it's fun to read. Well, look what time! Look what time is going to be. Uh, I've done three three books. Uh, that's all for this indie comics review. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notifications button so you'll know when I make my next video. Uh, I'm going to do one of these every week now. Uh, probably combine um, several books because this, this makes more sense to me <laughs> rather than editing two videos. I can just do one. Um, and um, yeah, and then I'll be uh, making another one next week along with a haul video 
and probably a drawing video coming up pretty soon. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.